I know a lot of you will be interested in deer identification once you get onto the wildlife area. And because there are two species of there and management incentives or management direction that we're providing is different for each species, uh, we want to make sure that you know the difference between white-tailed and black-tailed deer. For the hunting person that's going out there, white-tailed deer are protected and we don't want them shot. The bucks, which seem to generate the most interest from hunters and wildlife viewers, uh, a typical white-tail antler is represented by these two examples here. The, uh, the white-tail antler is primarily one main beam that comes up, and off that main beam there are points that comes off of it. They tend to be moved forward on the head, and they tend to close in on the front. They typically have good eye guards, uh, which are quite noticeable and much larger than anything you'll see on most black-tailed deer. In contrast, a black-tailed deer buck antler has a beam that comes up and then forks, and then if it forks again, it, it uh, comes off on each one of those other points. So it has a little bit different structure altogether. It doesn't come forward near as much, and it doesn't clo in, close in on the front also. And if you'll notice, very seldom will there be eye guards on a black tail antler. This is the one that's uh, present uh, in more numbers than there are white tail uh, on the North Bank Habitat Management Area. For those visitors to the North Bank Habitat Area, they're primarily interested in deer. Uh, like we've already said, there are two species of deer out there. One that's fairly abundant, the black-tailed deer that enjoys wide distribution throughout the western part of uh, the United States, and the one Columbia white-tailed deer, which is pretty limited in its distribution and includes the North Bank habitat area. How do you tell the difference between these two species of deer? It's very important for you that are hunting out there in particular to know what those differences are. Things to look for when you go out there and you're looking at deer. How do you tell? It's a black tail, it's a white tail. You see, you're going to have to be a student of, uh, of deer behavior and be able to take a good look at these animals to tell the difference. They're very similar. Okay, one of the key characteristics to look for for white tailed deer is that they will have a white eye ring around the eye and there will be a white ring around the base of the nose. Look at the animal quite a while. Look at it from different angles. Look at it in the sun. See if it'll turn if it's in the shade and so you can get some good looks at it in the sun. See if you can tell if there's an eye ring or not. If it has an eye ring or a partial eye ring, chances are it's a white-tailed deer. The name white-tailed deer, you probably think that, shoot, if it's running away from it and you see a white tail, it must be a white-tailed deer. But guess what? Black-tailed deer have white tails underneath, real similar to a white-tailed deer. So look at them. The difference between the two tails, between the two species, is a white-tailed deer has a broader tail. It's usually a little bit longer and seldom, if ever, has any black on the upper side of the tail. The black tail, on the other hand, does have black on the upper side of the tail. When they run, when they move away from you, both species will have a tendency to stick their tail up in the air and it'll move as they're moving. Uh, white tail will do that more often than black tail, but don't let that be your sole characteristic for identification. Black tail will do the same thing. In fact, many black tail are misidentified as white tail because they do stick up their tail as they're moving. Another thing you might look for is, uh, and you'll have to get a good look at these animals to tell that, uh, on the back leg there's a gland. Actually, it's a piece of hair that's a different color. It, it's noticeable when you start looking at deer. On a white tail, it's pretty small. It's generally an inch or so in length. On a black tail, it's longer. Not very many times you're going to be out there and be able to detect that, but uh, it might be something you're looking for uh, when uh, the animal is not standing in tall grass and is giving you a good look at it. A lot of the deer you see, you won't be able to tell for sure what it is. Behaviorally, these deer move a little bit different most of the time, especially when they start to move rapidly. Black-tailed deer have a tendency to bounce when they move. They kind of leap, leap, leap. White tail, on the other hand, sometimes they'll do that, but they're more apt to be a runner. They might keep their head down and they look like they're sneaking fast. 
Uh, so kind of look at that, and that can give you just a hint. As a rule of thumb, generally speaking, white-tailed deer inhabit the lower elevations, close to the creek bottom, close to the wetlands, uh, where there's maybe a few more oak and less conifers. Uh, and the blacktail are generally in higher elevations in areas where there's more conifers, and it's a little bit drier. Those are just keys. So when you see deer in those particular different kinds of habitats, you might be thinking, in this habitat, it's probably a whitetail, but I still need to take a good look at it because it might be a blacktail if it's down in the low country. Same thing up in the high country. Even though whitetail habitat is preferred at the low elevations, close to the wetter areas, they still disperse and are often seen up in the higher elevations. So again, there's little clues you can look at, where they are, where you are, what kind of habitat they're in, but there's no substitute for taking your time and getting a long, hard look at that animal. And if you're in doubt, well, you don't see the eye rings. You don't see the antlers on the buck to get a good look to see what the shape is. Uh, the tail, it, it hasn't turned around to give you a good idea for that. Assume that they're white-tailed deer. That way you'll never get into trouble by harvesting the wrong species. So when in doubt, assume it's the protected kind. So just keep that in mind when you're out there. Don't be in any rush. There's lots of deer on the area. If you feel like you must see a deer or shoot a deer right away, suppress that thought a little bit. There's lots of deer, so take your time. Look and look. The more you look, the more deer you're going to see, and you're going to get a chance at the kind of deer that you want. So enjoy your time out there. There's more than deer to see anyway. And uh, uh, enjoy your trip. It's neat country. Uh, it's quite a bit of open area, for, especially for Western Oregon. And uh, taking your time and looking is going to pay you dividends above and beyond your hunt. I hope you have a good feeling for the management area and the animals and the habitats that are there. And like Jerry said earlier, it's a neat piece of ground. It's about 10 square miles. It's got good trails. Uh, access is not a problem, especially if you're going to be afoot. And the diversity of critters out there and the habitats make this a wonderful experience for anybody to spending time out there, whether you're hunting or not. And enjoy those times. Enjoy the, the quiet. You're close to town, yet you're a long ways out because uh, there's not vehicles driving by you as you're out there hiking around. Whether you're successful or not, whether you see the specific kind of critter you want to see or not, hey, have a good time and enjoy your experience out there. It's a long season. You don't have to get everything done all at once and uh, just soak in some of the sunshine and the fresh air that's right there, uh, right in front of you as you're out there. So have a good time.